Raider Nation, hit that big red button that says subscribe. I'm Mitchell Renz here, and you are watching the Raiders Report. If you want free videos every single day around the Las Vegas Raiders, if this is what your heart looks like, it just bleeds, it pumps blood around the team, then hit that big red button that says subscribe. So what exactly are we talking about on today's show? We're talking about the offseason and some moves that the Las Vegas Raiders could do. Currently, they have minus $7.2 million in cap space. This is after the Raiders decided to move on from a player like Tyrell Williams, okay? So keep that in mind. What I tried to do on today's episode is think of myself as me, Gus Bradley, Mike Mayock, John Gruden. We're all sitting together in this room, and we're trying to figure out how can we get this team better? Who are some players that we need to cut? Tyrell, to start. And who are some other players that we need to potentially move on from to save some money? And then go out and figure out, figure, where am I from, the South? Figure out who to sign in free agency and then players to target in the draft. So the first move that ended up happening, which is why I wanted to make this video, is the Raiders decided to move on from Tyrell Williams. This won't be official until the start of free agency, so March 17th. So when you're on over the cap, if you're on Spotrack, they're telling you the Raiders have a certain amount of dead money. They haven't taken Tyrell off the books. I'm telling you, I am taking Tyrell off the books, and when you take him off, the Raiders' cap space is at point, or it's negative $7.2 million. So let's run through here real quick some of these cap cuts. You're moving on from Trent Brown. Get him the hell out of here. Save $14 million. This dude has never shown interest in being a Las Vegas Raider. If he, you can guarantee him he's going to play some football games, sure, that's great. Can anybody do that? No, you can't. So you move on from him. Another player that you're probably going to have to move on from. Now, if you can trade Mariota, if you can trade Trent Brown, great, do it. The bottom line in this video, though, is I'm trying to save some money so we can go invest in free agency. You cut Marcus Mariota more than likely, save $11.35 million. Sorry, way too much money to pay a backup quarterback. Now let's go to this guy here, LaMarcus Joyner. His cap hit is $11.2 million. If you decide to move on from him, you save $8.7 million. You're telling me I can save $8.7 million and invest that into a defensive player who's actually decent? Yeah, I do that. Now, maybe if they were to play Joyner at free safety, it's different. However, it just doesn't seem the way that they want to use him. So they're not using him right, and he stinks at playing nickel. Get rid of him. This next player here kind of breaks my heart a little bit. I was a big fan of the move of Richie Incognito when they first brought in him. However, dealt with a lot of Achilles injuries last year. He you know, came out of retirement, not getting any younger. So I, I would say just, you know, push him off, wish him the best of his life. Um, but if you're telling me I can save $5.6 million, that's the route I would do that. Now, if you want to invest that money and put that towards a guy like Denzel Good, I'm good with that. Here's another player that I think the Raiders are going to end up moving on from to save some money. Jalen Rashard. I like Jalen. He's a good player, and he's been a very successful player with this Raiders team. However, I'm not paying $3.5 million to a backup running back probably even your third string pass catching running back, a guy who uh, he really only touched the ball, what, 40 times last year? Not quite enough to pay $3.5 million. So go down in the comments section. Name another player that the Raiders should cut to save money because with defense the way that it is right now, you need to be able to figure out how to get rid of some of these other players to save up some money and invest in the defense. So I just gave you, I think that was five players off the top of my head, that the Raiders should move on from. And here they are. Trent Brown, Mariota, LaMarcus Joyner, Richie Incognito, and Jalen Richard. If you move on from all five of these players, you're at $43.15 million after cuts. That's how much you save. If I'm telling you right now you can save $43.15 million from cutting these five players, I would anticipate all you are like, all right, Mitch, you got my attention. I'm listening now. So how about this? You save $43.15 million after cutting these five people. What does it look like now? The Raiders are sitting there at $36 million. So now you have $36 million to be able to go out and spend a free agency, right? Well, I still want to be able to save some more money. So what I'm trying to do now is figure out, okay, we got rid of some of these bigger contracts. Who are some other contracts that the Raiders could move on from before free agency starts? That way you're actually even higher and have a better chance of signing even better players. So here's some five other players that I would move on from. Arden Key. Is edge rusher in need? Yes, but if I can save $2.2 million, hasta la vista, baby, to Arden Key. Eric Magnuson, 
exactly. Kyle Slaughter, the fourth string quarterback. Nope, I'm good there. And then two linebackers, 850K. If you decide to move on from all of those players, plus the five others that I mentioned, then you save, here you go, 41.77 million. This is what your cap space would be at after you decide to move on from those players plus the 36 million you had. You with me? So right now, I'm able to spend $41.7 million in free agency. So knowing that, who would be the number one player you would want the Raiders to go out and sign? Coming up here on the show, I'm going to be breaking down one player that I want them to re-sign, and then I'm going to be breaking down all the players that I want them to go out in free agency. The first move that I end up making, I'm going to go ahead and bring back Nelson Aguilar. Why? Because he was the number one target for Derek Carr last year, and I'm a believer that Derek's going to be the quarterback. So here's his projected contract. Three years, $24 million. I know there's reports out there that he wants Tyrell Williams type of money. I just don't think that he's going to get it. Now, maybe the Raiders can convince him to, hey, instead of getting a two-year contract, we'll give you a three-year contract if you just decide to take a little bit of money off. So a guaranteed three years, $24 million. Maybe not guaranteed, but like 12, 13, 14 million guaranteed. And if you want him to be this number one guy, he's going to be able to at least help out DC, and he's going to be able to help out some of these younger receivers. He wants to win. He brings incredible leadership. That's ultimately why I think this would be a smart move. So should the Raiders re-sign Nelson Aguilar type Y for yes, or I want you to type N for no. When I thought about this, I tried to make it in terms of priorities. Would I also want the Raiders to bring back good? As I said, yes. Nicholas Morrow, that one's still a question mark to me. But when I think about the players to re-sign, it's Nelson Aguilar, Denzel Good. But should they do it, Y for yes or N for no. If you guys like this t-shirt I have on, that's great. This is actually the best t-shirt that we sell here at Chat Sports for all Raiders fans. And if you guys want to get your hands on it, here's how you do it. Chatsports.com slash Raiders World. Has there ever been a more realistic shirt that you've ever seen? Raiders against the world. I mean, that, that is totally, totally true. And if you want to get this bad boy, it's only $24.99. It comes in sizes from large, I believe, all the way up to 5XL. Go check it out. It's at this link below. That link is also available for y'all in the description and in the live chat. We all know it's Raiders against the world, so go ahead and rep the team. All right, the big spender that I'm going to go with in free agency is Leonard Williams. Projected contract, four years, $72 million. I'm giving him $18 million a year. So when I think about why did I go with Leonard Williams, the reason why I went this route is because I thought, okay, if the Raiders are going to spend, they're probably only going to be able to spend 15, 16 million plus on one player at one position. It was either do I go defensive tackle or do I go safety? The comments that Gus Bradley made where he said that my defense is focused on getting interior pressure where I want a defensive lineman. So if I'm sitting there with Gus Bradley and I'm like, okay, he probably thinks that defensive tackle is a bigger need. I'm going to go with the guy like Leonard Williams over some of the other top safeties that I've shown here on this video. So you bring in Leonard Williams at 26 years old who grew up a Raiders fan. I know I'm going to get production out of him. 57 tackles, 11 and a half sacks. That's the guy that I ended up spending big on. Let's now go to this dude, Richard Sherman. So I don't know if this is the player that I would 100% want to go out and get, but the reason why I put him on this video is because it seems like a player that John Gruden's going to really, really want. Two years, $18 million. Why two years? Already multiple reports out there, and Richard Sherman said himself, he wants to play two more years. Sherman knows the Gus Bradley system well. If he wants to play cornerback, he can be that cornerback too. If he wants to drop back and play a little bit of safety, I actually think that might be a successful way. He won't be the center fielder, if you will, on the team, but he could at least still back up a little bit. If you're looking for an alpha to help some of these younger players like a Trayvon Mullen, uh, some of these younger players like a Damon Arnett, this is a smart move. And this is also a very, I'm just going to say it, John Gruden-ish type of move. If you're up with me, knock on wood. If you guys want to talk more Raiders with me, always hit me up on IG. I'm at MitchellRent365. If you want to talk to me about more players that you think the Raiders should go out and get in free agency, seriously, hit me up. I'm always checking my DMs. I'm always seeing what you guys have to say. And if there's anybody that I missed, please let me know. Let's go to this player here. So since I couldn't spend big on safety, I was like, okay, Who's a player that I think makes the most sense for what the Raiders are trying to do? I'm going to go with Sean Jenkins here. I'm going to give him a one-year contract, $2.5 million. In terms of where does he rank in terms of all my free agent safeties for the Raiders, he's my eighth guy. But he knows the Bradley system. He's done actually a pretty good job over the last four years with the Chargers. He's great in coverage and can play that cover one. 
I decided to spend big on Leonard Williams. That's why I'm going to go here with a cheaper route at safety with Rayshon Jenkins. Now, if the Raiders want to go in the draft, maybe look in the second round for like a Richie Grant, maybe a Jevin Holland, maybe Merrig ends up slipping down a little bit. Something to think about. This guy's also been pretty productive. So 84 tackles, two interceptions, four pass breakups. Rayshon Jenkins to the Raiders. The last move that I end up making here, one-year contract, $4.5 million to Kelvin Beecham. If the Raiders decide to move on from Trent Brown, then you need to be able to find a right tackle. I'm not really sold on all these right tackles in the draft, at least earlier on, and I still want to be able to know that I can be able to protect Derek Carr. Kelvin Beecham is not the top right tackle. However, I know he's going to be able to play. Three straight seasons with over 800 snaps and played 1,126 in 2020. I know a lot of things aren't guaranteed in life, but I am pretty confident that Kelvin Beecham, who is one of the toughest SOBs in the National Football League, is going to figure out a way to get out onto the football field. He played right tackle for the Arizona Cardinals, so move on from Trent Brown, invest a little bit cheaper at right tackle, and then if you can't figure out a way to bring back Denzel Good, maybe you try to roll the dice in with a guy like John Simpson. So here are the free agents that I decided to sign with the money that I had saved up. Remember, I cleared some room. I had $41.77 million to spend, and this is what I'm spending them on. Nelson Aguilar, three years, $24 million. So that's $8 million. Leonard Williams, Richard Sherman, Rashawn Jenkins, and Kelvin Beecham. So right here, if you're looking at all these signings, if this is what were to happen, I would want you to grade it. So that's what I'm going to ask you to do here. Let me know. Grade it. A, B, C, D, or F. How do you think I did? I know some of y'all are going to be ecstatic that I ended up figuring out a way to bring back Aguilar, figured out a way to bring back Leonard Williams, but some of y'all might get mad at me being like, dude, you didn't get an edge rusher. Dude, you didn't get a safety. I know. I wanted to be able to do it. However, I only had so much money to be able to work with. So go down in the comments. Let me know. A, B, C, D, or F. So with the Raiders making those picks, then I was thinking, okay, how would they go now in the draft? So if the Raiders went all those routes with defensive tackle, they went safety a little bit later on, the bigger need still is finding an edge rusher and finding a linebacker. So if, if everything that I just talked about in free agency and players to cut, here are seven players that I believe the Raiders would target at pick 17. Jeremiah Wilson more from Notre Dame. He, he, can, he can blitz, he can cover, he can do it all. It's probably the reason why I would say no to Nicholas Morrow. Christian Barmore, you can still invest in DT if you don't bring back Jonathan Hankins. Uh, Gregory Russo, a great edge rusher from Miami. You could also look at his teammate, Jalen Phillips. Also, let's go this route here. Aziz Ojolari. If you don't want to bring in Melvin Ingram, I do think a player that's a great outside stand-up linebacker is Aziz Ojolari. Also, Joseph Asai, edge rusher from Texas. Quiddy Pay is going to be a player that John Gruden falls in love with just because of his metrics and what he can do, even though the more and more tape I watch on him, the less and less I'm starting to like him. And then Zayvon Collins, linebacker from Tulsa. Not much of an edge rusher, but still a very talented linebacker. You don't go ahead and win defensive player and the best defensive player in college football for no reason. So if all those moves end up happening, those are seven players that I would target at pick number 17.